you come to the topic that is communism. Communism. Communism as a topic is not formally in your syllabus, but they ask question like what is the difference between communism and socialism in interview they ask. And uh, if you understand communism properly, you would be able to understand the different changes that is taking place in economy all over the world. So though formally it is not in your syllabus, I am teaching you communism, keeping in mind that you will develop proper comprehensibility in the matter of understanding the economies in different parts of the world. Apart from that, communism has also a connection to the topic that is globalization, effect of globalization on Indian society. That's the reason I am teaching you communism and I am telling you how communism is different from socialism. You know that uh, particularly the 17th century and 18th centuries, these two centuries were the centuries of transformation in the entire Europe. Lots of changes took place in European economy at that point of time. Because before this, European economy was basically an agriculture-centric economy. Agriculture was the backbone of Europe. And I have told you the fact earlier, Agriculture is a great source of employment, was a great source of employment for the people of Europe once upon a time. But there are certain limitations of agriculture because agriculture cannot provide stable source of employment to the people 365 days in a year. So what happened in 18th century, that also I have discussed, industrial revolution became successful in Europe and particularly Britain was the leader of industrial revolution. So right now what happened, obviously people, science and technology started growing because of the breakthrough of science and technology, people came to know the fact how to establish industry. So right now, some people established industry. People, those who established industry, obviously they gave employment to large number of workers so many people in Europe, different parts of the Europe, they left their agricultural activity. Right now they came to industrial area, keeping in mind that industry will provide them substantial and significant source of employment and wage. And you know, in this way, industrialism started taking its root in European society telling you the fact, any process of change, industrialization is a process of change. Industrialization basically means the process by which industries were established in different parts of Europe initially, and you know, European powers were there in different parts of the world, like Portuguese, like French, like British people. So in this way, what happened, British people, Portuguese people, French people, they established colonies in different parts of uh, Africa and Asia. So in this way, the process by which colonies were established in different parts of the, uh, different parts of Asia and Africa, that process is also called colonialization. So because of uh, industrialization of Europe, the whole world also experienced colonialization. Colonialization, I have already discussed its meaning the process by which obviously colonies were established in different parts of the whole world and basically the industrially developed countries they wanted raw material that is to be used in matter of manufacturing finished goods. So right now these people, these colonialized uh, colonializers that is the British, that is the French, that is the Portuguese people right now they targeted the raw material of the agricultural field of different agriculture centric countries. Raw material was purchased at a lower price and transportation system like train, uh, railways, roadways were developed, port system was developed. So through advanced transportation mechanism right now the raw material of the less developed countries they reached in the factories of the Britain and in this way what happened? these raw materials were converted into finished goods. 
and again through the same advanced transportation system it came back to the underdeveloped countries. This process is called colonialization. So I am telling you the fact, industrialization and colonialization they are interrelated process. Because Europe experienced industrialization, that's the reason Asia and Africa, in those countries of Asia and Africa, colonial power, the colonial power, they established their colony and the process is called colonialization. So telling you the fact, industrialization is a process of change by which industries were established in different parts of the world. And any process of change, any process of change that brings lots of opportunity for people as well as certain un un unwanted challenges for the people. Getting my point? Any process you take from your life, start, think about class at 6.30. That is also a process of change in your life. Because generally, I usually think that uh, nowhere in this country I take class at 6.30. So obviously, as it is at 6.30, you have to get up early in the morning. Getting up early in the morning has positive contribution for your body. Yes or no? But at the same time, you have to make compromise with your comfort because 5 o'clock you are getting up from the bed. What is happening? Your conscience says, okay, please get up or else you would be delayed in the matter of reaching in the class. But your emotion says, no, sleep for another 15 minutes. So you have to make compromise with your comfort for the purpose of reaching in, in the class. So reaching in the class means getting more exposure, better exposure to advanced source of knowledge. So this is a process of change in your lifestyle that is having opportunities for you, that is also promoting you to make some compromise with your level of comfort and convenience. Okay, so just like in life of a person, a process of change is bringing lots of opportunities and challenges same thing also in a life of a nation or life of a country is taking place whenever the country is experiencing certain process or factors of change. So right now, Europe experienced industrialization. Industrialization being a process of change, it had many positive consequences and also many negative consequences. Positive consequences, I told you, right now the workers got 365 days job in a year. Right now their standard of standard of living started increasing, their wage also started growing because generally industrial worker gets get wage higher than what agricultural worker get. And industries are manufacturing finished goods. Obviously, the price of standardized finished good is comparatively less than the price of the goods that is basically made through the handicrafts industry, yes or no? This is the positive aspect. But at the same time, industrialization has some negative consequences. And I am telling you the fact, communism as an ideology was developed by Karl Marx, not by seeing the positive contribution of industrialization, though industrialization has many positive contributions. Telling you the fact at the beginning, very clearly, that communism as a political ideology was developed by Karl Marx only after seeing the destructive, the detrimental, the devastating consequences of industrialization. How industrialization is bringing problem in life of the people. That became the major center of analysis for Karl Marx for developing the theory, the political ideology that is called communism. Getting my point? So the negative consequences of industrialization captivated imagination of Karl Marx after observing the sufferings, the problems, the plights, the predicaments of industrial workers. Right now, Karl Marx developed a political ideology that is called communism. But I am telling you, at the beginning, by adopting a neutral approach that industrial society and industrialization process has enormous positive consequences for the whole world as well as some unwanted challenges for the whole world. Getting my point? So how did Karl Marx develop that communism and how that communism would be brought in future society that Karl Marx is discussing? You see, Karl Marx studied the history of Europe. He studied also history of all world. 
right now Karl Marx is dividing the history of Europe into different stages. I am not teaching you communism exhaustively, what is necessary for your understanding, only that much section of communism I am discussing because it is not in your syllabus. You see, Marx says, long ago, there was a stage in European society that is called slavery stage, where the society was divided into two groups, that is slave and slave master. You might have studied in history of world, slavery stage, slavery stage. Stage is slavery stage of history. During this stage, people are divided into two groups, that is slave master, slave masters and slaves. Slave masters were physically strong people, slaves were physically weak people. You would find that everywhere in the world, strong has exploited the weak, strong has captivated the weak, strong has grossly abused and misused the weak. So obviously once upon a time in Europe there was existing a period of history that is called slavery, where the society was divided into two classes, two groups. Slave master, they were the physically strong people. Slaves, they were the physically weak people. At that point of time industry was not there, settled agriculture was not there, rather cattle rearing activity was prevailing. Cattle rearing activity was prevailing. So, Slave masters, they were owner of a cattle and, and at the same time slave masters, they were also owner of the slaves because at that point of time slaves were regarded just like a piece of property, just like you say I am having this much balance in my bank account, long ago in European society some rich people they were claiming okay I am having this much slave, so slave is just like a property at that point of time. It was the private property of the slave master. Cattle was also the private property of the slave master. Getting my point? So in this way, slave was not having any liberty, any freedom. What the slave will do? The master was taking the decision. Whether a slave will marry or not, master will take the decision. Whether the slave, after marriage, whether a slave would reproduce children or not, give birth to children or not, master will take the decision. So in each and every aspect of slave's life, master was the decision maker because slave was regarded as a private property. Then society, time passed, next stage came, next stage is called your feudalistic stage or feudalism. Feudalistic stage or feudalism. Feudalism stage is a stage during which settled agriculture, settled agriculture came into existence in European society, settled agriculture. How to grow crops in the agricultural field, man came to know it. So whenever settled agriculture came into existence, right now people started thinking, instead of possessing slaves, those who are the human being, we have to possess non-human being that is the agricultural field because agricultural field does not have life, slave has a life. So right now you think mind of the people is getting liberalized, liberal thought is coming. Right now some people started thinking no we should not possess the slaves rather we should possess agricultural land. So while this type of thought came obviously that society is called feudalistic society where settled agriculture was the backbone of European economy. At this point of time what happened? Society also got divided into two groups or two classes. One group of people in feudalistic society or the time of feudalism they are called feudal lord, feudal lord. Other groups are called feudal serf, serfs. Lord and serfs. Lords were the owner of agricultural land and serfs were not the owner of agricultural land. They were working on land and the crops that they were producing, a part of the crop they were giving to the owner in form of rent. Getting my point? They were not the owner. They were tilling the agricultural land and growing the crops and how much crops they were growing, a part of it, it kept on varying from area to area. So a part of the crop was give, basically given in form of rent to the owner of the land. So obviously owner is called lord and the worker of agricultural land is called serf. Obviously owner that is the 
feudal lord was exploiting the feudals of yes or no? Because lord was not working, serf was working and producing something and part of it lord was taking because he was simply the owner, he was not working at all but he was getting a good part of it. This was also an, was also a, an exploitative mechanism, exploitation was done here, lord was exploiting the serf, got it?